So today, it's the racking and initial taste of the Dragon Breath Mead. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying Brews. Today, we are racking the Dragon Breath Mead. Now, we mentioned it before, but Brian and I cheat, and we smell the airlock. <laughs> yeah, do you, do you guys smell your airlock? <laughs> like, I know that sounds really weird, but if you, like, make it bubble, and then you smell it, you can kind of get an idea of what the smell going on in there is. This one smelled a little bit more jalapeno to me than I really wanted, so I'm I'm hoping that we didn't get the ratio wrong, but there's always the chance of adding more fruit later. Also, speaking of airlocks, check this out. Yeah, our airlock, if you can see in there, there's a couple of uh, uninvited guests, also known as fruit flies. Now, to some people, this is a terrifying aspect. To us, this is, means our airlock did its job. Yay, Don't be airlock. upset by this. If there's no none in there after a month and a half of sitting on the counter and right next to fruit, bananas, and stuff like that, <laughs> it means they're probably in here. You want them up here. Trust me. But anyway, we are going to uh, dump this guy out. If I can get him. And then I want to get the lid off, and we'll show you what it looks like inside. I get the first look. Okay. So as I open that lid and I take a look inside, what I see is jalapenos floating on the top. I see some of the berries and things like that floating at the top, but I don't see anything you don't want to see, like molds and things like that. It might not be the prettiest looking thing from this angle, but uh, trust me, that's a healthy look right there. You want it to look like that. What I am seeing too is the jalapenos make this look less than appetizing, like seeing green stuff floating in red. Doesn't really work all that you pretty. also probably noticed from the picture that Brian showed is that the fruit and some of the flesh of the jalapeno really lost their color, oh, and yeah. that's completely natural. Mm -hmm. We've done some brews with strawberries, and the strawberries, strawberries turned white. Turn white. So don't freak out. That's normal. They aren't moldy. The smell. They've just leached their color into the brew. The smell is amazing. So what I want to do is I'm going to go get a little tiny sieve so we can take a reading. And you might be wondering what I meant by, I'm going to go get a tiny sieve. Because there's so much stuff, I don't want to suck up all those little seeds and berries and stuff. So I'm going to have Derek hold the sieve into the liquid a little bit. And you see that little pool there? I can just take right from there. And then we don't get any seeds. And again, we just, just like always, take a reading. Now, being that this is the end of primary fermentation, I want to be a little bit more careful with aeration here even though I'm leaving it open because I haven't degassed, so there's plenty of CO2 in there, but I don't want to like, you know, stir it up or anything like that. So we're just gonna drop our hydrometer in here, give it a little spin. It doesn't look like there's a lot of gas though. Uh, this was started on December 4th, today's January 7th, so it's been a little over four weeks. It's so close to hitting the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna call it at 1.000. <laughs> Went to exactly straight 100. I'm going to pour off a sample for us to taste. And the rest, I'm going to pour it in, but I'm going to pour it in really carefully. So that I don't splash or anything like that. All right, so this started at 1.104 and went to 1.000. Now that means it went dry, but because this is a higher percentage alcohol, it actually means it actually left a little bit of sweetness. We have a video that explains that a little bit better, but essentially alcohol is so much lighter than water that 1.000 on a brew of 14.85% like this actually means that it's got some sweetness left. If that doesn't make any sense, let me explain that one more time. Alcohol is so much lighter than water that if this has 15% alcohol in it, it should be below 1.000 if it was dry. In other words, it'd be like 0.993 or 994, somewhere in that range. So that literally means that there's some sweetness left to be at 1.000. Science, it's a thing, gotta love it. But anyway, that's where we're at, 14.85%. Pretty respectable, especially since this is Lalvin 71B. It's only supposed to go to 14%. Interesting. So for the moment, can we just throw the lid back on this while we do the tasting real quick? If we were to speculate why this went so high, 
it might be because of all the fruit that was added there to was it. Lots for those used so to play with. Lots of nutrients, nitrogen primarily, for mm. the fruit for the yeast to be happy and do its thing. All right. Initial notes. Okay. Keep in mind this is only four and a half weeks old, so it's going to be green. I don't expect this to taste wonderful, but we just like to do this. First, that color is lovely. It's not cleared out fully yet, so you can tell it's still got a little bit of work to go, but it's actually a really nice color. I thought it might use up more of the color, but it didn't, so cool. You can smell the capsicum. You can totally smell it. I'm not getting a lot of fruit in the aroma. We may have to back sweeten with fruit. Yeah. The the scent definitely has more of the Which is what I thought from before pepper when scent. we got to smell it. Go ahead and give it a taste. Now calf's camels are not her favorite thing. I like them. We'll find out. It's got the heat. It definitely has the heat, but but it's dry. It's more dry than I want it to be. It is definitely dry, but you can tell there's fruit there. that there's fruit there. I mean, do we? Can we tell that there's fruit there? Because we know there's fruit there. That's a possibility. But no, comparing can, the flavor profile it. between just a pure capsicumel and a capsicumel with fruit, like this one is, there's definitely a noticeable difference. What this tastes like right now is a very dry red wine with not a lot of tannin with hot sauce added to it yeah. like that's that's pretty much what this tastes like so to me it's not the most pleasant experience i think capsicumels need to be sweet so what we're going to do is we're going to add some honey to this when we when we siphon this out and, and um, i'll mix that up so we're going to back sweeten this and then we're going to let it sit and see if it referments because we're so far above what the tolerance for that yeast is already it might not re-ferment, and we can get a very stable, nice, sweet, spicy mead. That's what we're after. Now I know when we made this that I said I might have to. I didn't actually expect it to go above the tolerance, though. I thought it would stop and give me a little yeah. bit of sweetness, yeah. <laughs> but it went beyond it. So that just goes to show you, those yeasts don't know what the package says. Yep. You know, it's only about one point over, but still, Yeast you know. Yeast can't read. Yeah. It's a shame. We should teach them to read. <laughs> we should start a, a reading program for yeast that way. <laughs> Well, that way we can be predictable with them. Anyway, we'll put this to the side. It's not bad, though. We've definitely made things that at four weeks were much worse than that. <laughs> I hate That's to say like that. glowing review. On a scale of one to ten, this is about a four. Okay? It's just not something I'd want to drink yet. But I see the potential in oh, it. Oh, yes. Definitely. And that's something that comes with experience in brewing. You can go, okay, that doesn't taste really good right now, but I know what's there and I know what I can work with. It's got good bones, you might say. So we can make it So there. at this stage, what are we going to do? We're going to rack this into a pitcher. Okay. Which means we need a device of elevation. Okay, so we want to rack this. And all racking is is using a siphon, or an auto siphon in this case, to basically remove the liquid and leave the heavy solids. Um, and the way we like to do it is she'll put that to about the middle of the must and using a long stroke, she gets the siphon going once I put this in here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Make it so. And you'll see the liquid gets into the hose and now we have a siphon. It's actually a gravity feed technically working by a vacuum. So this will just keep filling this guy up. And she'll move that down as we go, trying to keep it out of the heavy lease at the bottom. We can't see to the bottom, so we have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, okay so as we were siphoning, <laughs> she's all buried here. As we were siphoning, it kept getting clogged up. And we noticed that when we got about that far and it clogged, and we cleaned it out, and it went like maybe two more seconds and it got clogged again. The, ju the fruit is just all through this. So... You've heard me do a rough rack a couple of times before, I hope. We're going to do one. I was I was skipping it because it's been so long on this. What we're going to do is scoop out as much of the fruit as we can using this, put it into a bowl, and that goes into composter or something like that. And then we may pour the rest through a sieve and let this sit for another couple of weeks while it settles out, and then we can rack it properly.
Okay, so while I was out of the room, Derica used this guy here and took all of the <coughs> solids, I don't know if you can see them, all the solids out of that fermenter, okay? She then siphoned it using a strainer. Amazing. I wouldn't have thought to do that. So this isn't really a, a, a rough rack so much as a first rack, just with some minor technical difficulties that Derica took care of. So that means now that it's into this pitcher, we can actually move it from here into the fermenter, okay, for second secondary racking. <laughs> I feel like the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there's a lot of solids still in here, and that's okay. This is going to be a secondary racking. We'll probably have to do, you know, my two-rack rule. We'll have to rack it again before we bottle. But anyway, we're going to actually do the racking now. Whoops. I'm just going to squirt water all over the place. <laughs> this was sanitized in... The Red Bucket of Sanitization! <laughs> only got my face that time. Now it's working. And being that there's less solids in here, she can just rest that all the way at the bottom. And what I'm gonna to do to speed it up is I'm gonna pull out this chair. I'm gonna just set it here. The higher the difference, or the greater the difference in elevation between the two things, the greater the pressure of gravity or the pull of gravity on the vacuum, making it siphon faster. So put that one higher, that one lower, works better. So now that we have it fully racked, we're going to do is we're going to back sweeten this with more honey now remember this is 14.85 percent on a 14 percent tolerance yeast so it shouldn't kick up a fermentation emphasis on the word shouldn't again those darn yeasts they just don't know how to read so it is possible this will kick up another ferment so let me just show you what we're going to do i have this at zero i'm going to add eight ounces which should be you know maybe like 18 to 20 points I, if I can fit three quarters in there, I will, because I think I want this to be a little bit sweeter. A pound would be too much. And I think I will add 12 ounces to this. For the record, we are using Sweet Squeeze Honey, which we do have links to below. Uh, we get it from Amazon. It is a local Florida honey, but we do actually buy it from Amazon just like you would. I highly recommend it. It's pretty reasonably priced, five, six bucks a pound, which from what I'm hearing for local honey is actually a really, really good price. And we've You've been using it for months now. It's great stuff. Works really, really well. Um, okay, so we have our 12 ounces in here. I am going to take the rubber stopper with a hole, put my finger over it, and give this a good shake. Now, you might be concerned that because I'm shaking it, I'm introducing air. Well, I didn't degas. And as you can see, and here, there's plenty in there. So all that, all, any oxygen that was introduced just got forced right out. It's not going to stay. Trust me, it's fine. As I've said many, many times, mead is actually harder to make vinegar from than you think. So a little tiny bit, not a factor, especially when there's so much gas still in here. It's going to force that oxygen right out. The reason it forces it out is oxygen is lighter than CO2. So the CO2 will literally sit on the bottom and as it rises, it pushes the oxygen right out. So don't worry about it. But you do want to get this mixed because this is not a ferment anymore. This is now an age, a bulk age. So I want to make sure that it's mixed all the way through. It also means that we really need to take another reading on this. That way we'll know if fermentation kicked back up again. While this sits here, to those of you wondering, why doesn't he ever just use one of those bags? You know what? In this case, you're right. I should have. I totally should have. It would have made it a lot easier. I don't because normally it's no big deal. You just rack around it and it's fine. In this case though, a lot of that fruit just like fell apart and turned into just pulp floating in the liquid. So you know what? You're right. I should have used a bag. All right, it's mixed up. This goes back into the stuff. And this was supposed to be a really simple video. You know, just rack it off and taste it and tell you about it. Yeah, this is real brewing folks. That's how it goes. <laughs> You never know what's going to happen. How many readings have we taken on this now? 27, 42, something like that? Another thing that we can do, though, is I can take a little taste of this because now that we've added more honey to it, I can see what it, you know, if the sweetness level is where I want it to be. So there's advantages, you know. So how much honey did we add? 12 ounces. And it did pretty much as expected. It brought it to 1.030. 
See, I'm expecting this to ferment just a little bit more and end up somewhere around like 1025. And if it doesn't, 1030 is actually my sweet spot, especially for a capsicum melt. I like it to have more sweetness than you might normally have because that hot really does make a difference. And before somebody makes a joke about it, somebody actually said this. Did someone tell him that jalapenos are hot? Notice the eye roll. Let me, let me do that for you again. <laughs> jalapenos are hot peppers. Uh, now, being that I do lots of gardening, I can tell you, yes, there's a wide range in heat level on jalapenos. Ours are hot. The ones we grow Our jalapenos are, are surprisingly spicy. They're probably up there with most habaneros. So before people start saying, oh, they're sweet peppers. <laughs> no, they're not. They're hot peppers. Get over it. They may not be as hot as some, but they're still hot peppers. Still taste, smells like calf's camel, shockingly. Ooh, the fruitiness comes back. That that definitely brought some more of the fruitiness to the forefront. Still very much calf's camel. Mm -hmm. But you get a little bit more of the fruit now. And I'm hoping over time as this melds together that that'll come through even more. It might even need more back sweetening. Yeah, it might. I'm not going to do that now. We're going to wait and see, okay? So for now... We are going to put the bong back in, put the airlock back on, mark it up, and set it under the desk. I want this to sit for a couple weeks, and we'll take a reading and find out what it's doing. All right, so we put our bong and an airlock back in. We have our paper over there that we're going to put on the side of this, make sure it's all dry. As I said, this is going to go under the desk, let it sit for like three, four weeks, see what it's doing. There's a lot of gas in here. I might let this go even longer because I also want it to clear out some more. But the important thing is, is it still fermenting? This airlock will tell me only a small part of the, part of the story because it is going to degas. So is it degassing or is it actual fermentation? The only way to know is to take another reading in a few weeks. And if it doesn't change, we know fermentation did not restart. And if it does restart, that's okay. We let it go another few weeks after that. Then take another reading, wait a week, take another reading. If they're the same, Fermentation's done again, and then we reevaluate and re back sweeten if necessary. But if you like this video, give us a like. If you like what we're doing here on this channel, give us a subscribe and hit the little bell notification icon so that YouTube will tell you every time we put out something new. If you want to be more part of the channel and you want to be part of the VIP club that we have on Facebook, join us on Patreon, where certain tiers of most tiers of our patrons. Most tiers of our patrons get access to our VIP club on Facebook where we share little videos and pictures and you're, you can communicate with us one-on-one -on -one and get answers to your questions right away. You can share your stuff and get to see what other people are doing and it's a great learning experience for everybody involved, even me. I learn stuff there all the time. That's all I got for today. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.